So uh, the problem says use the position and time graph, which I'm about to show you, to find, and we have three things we're going to find, the average velocity for the time interval t equals 1.5 seconds to t is equal to 4 seconds, um, and the uh, instantaneous velocity at t is equal to 2 seconds uh, by using the slope of the tangent line on the graph. We'll get to that in a second. And part c, for what value of time is the velocity equal to 0? So I'll reveal the graph to you here. Now, first of all, this is not a computer printout. It is not exact. I've tried to put the information on here that's important, but you just have to know that it's not, it's, it's not fully baked as far as being exactly right. But you get the idea. We're going to be able to solve the problem based on this. So we have a purple line here, which is the position uh, as a function of time. So uh, up here, uh, you know, at the low values of time, we're far away from the origin, and then we get closer to the origin, then we get farther away from the origin. And this red line is the slope of the line tangent over here at this, at this point there. What we want to do is find the average velocity uh, in part one between t is equal to uh, 1.5 seconds and up to 4.00 seconds. Um, so we have 1.5 seconds marked here, and I've kind of, kind of marked right there. What's going on at 4 seconds? We're over here. So I will do my best to show that information on the graph as well. It's not going to be perfect, so something like this. So at four seconds, we're up at two meters away, and at one and a half seconds, we're at eight meters away. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the average velocity. So the average velocity uh, is equal to delta x over delta t. So it's final minus initial. So at four seconds, the final position is actually two meters away from the origin, so 2.00 and we're going to subtract away the initial position. Uh, the initial position is at 1.5 seconds, and it's actually 8 meters away, so 8.00 meters away. So this is final minus initial. So we're getting closer. Uh, the initial position here is the final is here. We're, we're getting closer to the origin as time goes on. And then t2 minus t1. So t2 is 4 seconds, and then uh, t1 is, this is right between 1 and 2, that's 1 and a half seconds, so 1.5 seconds. So we're finding the average velocity between basically this point in, uh, in, in the time-space graph and this point on the time-space graph. So what we have here is 2 minus 8, we're going to get negative 6 on the top, and on the bottom, 4 minus uh, 1.5, and that's going to be 2.5. So the average velocity, 6, uh, negative 6 divided by 2.5 gives you negative 2.4, and what units are it? Meters per second, because we subtract the distance and then we have time on the bottom. And this is an average, right? And the average means that we are, uh, because the sign means something too. So the speed is 2.4 meters per second as an average there. But the sign means that we're traveling, what? Toward the origin, right? Because, uh, uh, or I should say, starting far away and we're coming back, we're traveling in the negative x direction. Essentially, this is big values of x. This is the origin, and here are the negative values of x going this way. So we're starting far away, and our travel is heading in the direction of negative values of x. That's why we get a negative uh, answer there. Now for part b, you have to use your imagination a little bit because my drawing is not perfect. It says we want to find the instantaneous velocity at t is equal to 2 seconds by, by using the slope of the line tangent, which is given. So at t is equal to 2 seconds, let me switch colors here, at exactly 2 seconds, um, if you go up here, then basically this is the point basically right here. Now this red line is attempting to be the, the tangent line to the graph at this point, but because I got a little bit too close here, it looks like maybe it's touching up here. You have to use your imagination here and just trust me that this red line is tangent to the graph at this uh, point of two seconds. So when it asked me to find the instantaneous velocity, what you know is that you have to find the slope of the line tangent to the curve. We're, we're not given an equation, so we can't just take the derivative. We have to find a tangent line, and we have to find the slope of that tangent line. So we really want to find the slope of the red line right here. Now we see that the red line uh, goes up here and touches the axis here, and the red line goes and touches the axis here. So we actually have two points on the graph. The first point is 0, comma, this is 13, this is 10, 11, 12, 13. So 0, 13 is one point on the line. Another point on the line is here, which is, this is 3.5, between 3 and 4, 3.5, 0. So 3.5, 0. We have to find the slope of the line uh, there. So basically what we do is, uh, you know, calculate essentially rise over run, um, and so, or just, you know, the y value and the x value there. 
Um, so what we want to do is we want to figure out uh, the instantaneous velocity, delta x, delta t. When I write delta x, that is the rise. That's how far up you're going. Delta t, that is the run. So even though we're calling it the velocity, this is the slope between these two points. Now, just like any time you calculate slope, you can subtract any direction you want. I'm going to go this direction, 0 minus 13. So I'm subtracting 0 minus 13, the y values, or the, uh, or the uh, I guess it's really the x values. But you know what I mean. If this is an xy coordinate plane, these are the y values here. And since I'm subtracting this way, I'm going to go the same way, 3.5 minus 0. I'm just finding the slope of this line from algebra. So you have negative 13 on the top, and you have 3.5 on the bottom. So when you take negative 13 on the top and 3.5 on the bottom, the instantaneous velocity is equal to negative 3.714, and that's meters per second. Again, we got a negative number. Why did we get a negative number? Because the slope of this line is slanted in the negative way. Remember, these are positive slopes. These are negative slopes. So this slope is negative, and it's the instantaneous velocity at this point, and because the instantaneous velocity is negative, it tells me I'm at this position on the graph traveling towards the negative x direction. In other words, I'm coming down closer to the origin, going towards the values of negative x, which is exactly what I am doing. Now the average velocity in this window here was 2.4 meters per second, but actually at this exact moment in time, the velocity is a little bit faster you know, so in, in the window, when I took the average, the velocity is always changing. At the exact moment in time, it's a little higher than the average. Some, some points along the path were a little slower. Some points were a little bit faster. So the average was a little different than the instantaneous, but that's, that's how it always works. The, inst the average velocity is always going to be a little different than the instantaneous value, of course. Now, part C says, let me just read it and make sure. Part C says, if I can find it. Part C says, for what value of t is the velocity equal to zero? So what I'll do is I'll go here for part C. So the velocity equal to zero. Well, what does that mean? The velocity has equal to zero, but we know that the velocity is the slope of the line tangent to the position. This purple graph is the position graph. That's what it is. The slope is the velocity at any given point. Here, the, the slope is negative, so it's negative velocities. Here, the slope is positive, so it's positive velocities, because we're going away from, from uh, toward the positive x values. But right down here, the slope is exactly zero, so we know that the velocity instantaneously is going to be zero right at the turnaround point here. And we can see that a time of four seconds is exactly when the slope is zero. So basically, from the graph, we can just see that t is four seconds. The velocity is equal to zero. At t is equal to four seconds. We didn't do any calculations because we can just see that the bottom of this graph is exactly down there like this. So just one more problem with a couple of parts to show you how to handle it when you have a graph. But it's all the same concepts. The position graph we have, we can find average velocities by pulling two points off the graph and figuring out what their delta x and delta t are. And then if we ever need the instantaneous uh, velocity, then if we have a graph, and if all we have is a graph, draw a line uh, that is sloped and just tangent, just touching the point of interest, and find the slope of that line. That's called the instantaneous velocity. And then if you ever want to know when the velocity is zero, just look when the slope of the tangent line is zero. In this case, it was down here. So I'd like you to solve uh, this problem yourself. Make sure you understand. Follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to switch gears, and we're going to begin to talk about acceleration. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.